Good day Hyperspinners, Austin here and in this tutorial today I'm going to be showing you how to set up MAME or want of a better word Arcade Classics um, <laughs> before I started doing Hyperspin or making Hyperspin um, I didn't know anything about MAME to be honest uh, I didn't know what it represented or anything um, I probably still couldn't tell you what the initials mean apparently the initials do mean something However, to me, it's just arcade classics. All the arcade games that I used to play back in the day, uh, recreated or dumped and been able to play on home computers, tablets, phones, um, any device you can more or less think of, to be honest. Um, but today we're going to be focusing on installing this on the Hyperspin front end so you can play the arcade classics. The good thing about MAME is that it's not just um, arcade classics. You can also play other various systems through MAME. The good thing about MAME is its functionality, its appearance and the simplistic way in which it does things. It's very um, original to its roots. So the developers of it try to make sure that the feel and the way everything is played is as close to it used to be back in the day as possible. Um, anyway, enough of my waffling on, let's get stuck in and get the ball rolling. Okay, first up then is the actual download. Including with this video, I've put everything that you will need as a hype spinner to be able to get MAME up and running on your system. And I mean everything, from the emulator, the wheels, um, everything that's missing from MAME to make it look good, basically I've given you. Be aware, I'm a widescreen user, so most of my media and art all is of a widescreen variant. However, anything that I can include that I've been able to find that's missing from the systems to actually be downloaded, I've included in the download also. Um, Right, let's get stuck in then. Okay, first of all you need to take yourself to the actual website. And I've put a link down below, which should take you straight there. Okay, it's a mega link. If there is any issues with the links, just give me a shout. Either by PM, a message on this video, or over at the Hyperspin forums. And I'll do my best to get it sorted. However for now it's the mega link. All you need to do as per normal, I'm sure you've all used mega before, click on the download it will begin to download in the actual tab. Keep the tab open while it's downloading and eventually you will see a file on your desktop. Um, it's a 7-zip file, it is very compressed so it may take some time while I'm waffling on I'll probably uh, extract it <laughs> if I can find the actual uh, let's just do I don't know extract here let's hope that works okay yeah it's uh, it's I think it's 1.5 gigs or something along them lines the actual download once compressed is 677 uh, megabits so it is depending on your download speed it may take a while okay while that's downloading then um, We'll have a talk about MAME, I suppose. Yeah, um, I like to set my system up not as MAME, but as Arcade Classics. It's just a case that I set all this up, basically, so I like a drink just like everybody else, and people come around the house, and sometimes we veg out in front of the TV, and one of the best ways is to pop on Hyperspin and have a bit of a geeky moment. Um, the problem is that, I don't know if it's the same as everywhere else in the world, but in the UK, nobody knows what MAME is, at least my friends don't and I didn't. So if I say, well, let's play a bit of MAME, they'll look at me with a dumb look on, my, on the face. <laughs> and they'll have to actually explain it's the PC game, uh, sorry, the arcade games that we used to play back in the day. So to, <laughs> to get around that, basically, I call it Arcade Classics and all my media points towards Arcade Classics. Anyway. You know, for the waffle, you'll see it again in a second. Right, so I've extracted all the files down here. Let's have a quick uh, run through about what we're going to be looking at then. 
Okay, I've included all the artwork. I've done it in the widescreen format and the normal format. I've also given you a few extras for your main menu as well in case you need them. Okay, we've got databases. I've got two different types of databases and various databases within them. Again, during the installation, we'll talk about that as we're going along. Emulators, I have included the emulators. There's no BIOS files or anything dodgy. These are all um, accessible through various websites, so I'm not <laughs> giving you any dodgy downloads or anything. Uh, feel free to virus check everything. As far as I'm aware, there's no viruses, but you know, feel free. Safety first and all that stuff. I'll show you how to set all these up. And I've also included some uh, extras as well. Again, we'll go along that. It's just to make the overall presentation a lot more better on your setup. Right, so let's get stuck in and do the installation then. Okay then, so now you've, you know what the name is. You've downloaded all the files that you need. And now we can go ahead and actually set up the emulator. Um, while I'm doing this, big up to uh, Jump Styles, I believe it was, who's actually compiled the versions of MAME that I use. It's a different variant from the uh, normal MAME. It's MAME, I don't know how you pronounce it, MAME UIFX, or MAME UIFX, I can't pronounce it. It's a different version, and it's the one that's included in the pack anyway. I've included two variants, uh, the one that I use, because I've got version of MAME uh, 0.153, however we're currently up to version 0.159 at this moment in time. So I've included the emulators for both. The 153 version is my actual setup and the 159 is a plain vanilla version which has no added extra files like my high scores for example. Uh, it's just ready to roll basically. Right, enough of the waffle again, let's set up MAME. So, first off you need the... <laughs> I've opened the wrong one. You need the version of MAME, sorry, the version of Hyperspin and the Hyper Launch HQ that we've already installed, i.e. the one that you're using. Um, Hopefully you're joining me through the videos that I've been making previously. With I showed you how to set up Hyper Launch and Hyper Spin. We've uh, joined them together, and also we've done Hyper Sync. Everything should be updated, and we should be up to the level of this at the moment. So currently we're using Hyper Launch version 1.1.3, and within the we can see at the moment that we've got. A the emulators tab open and we have all these exclamation marks down the side of the emulators. This means that it currently have all the information for the emulators in Hyperlaunch loaded up. However, Hyperlaunch cannot find any of these emulators and that's why it's got the exclamation mark to it. Uh, Bluestacks, as we talked about on the previous videos, that's installed on my computer in its default location so it has picked up on that. Hyperlaunch HQ is clever and it will do that. Right. So now we want to set up um, main on our system. Um, a quick word of warning: uh, main is uh, version dependent. Uh, don't get me wrong; I am no pro at the arcade stuff. Uh, in fact, I'm probably probably one of the worst for it. I muddled through. I managed to get things working, and it looks good. And to me, that's what counts at the end of the day. I get everything that I want, functionality-wise, and I get it to look good. Um, it works seamless for me, so in my eyes, I've done my job. So this is what I'm sharing with you. However, points to note with the actual main and the emulators. Um, as we talked about, I've included two. One's mine, the 153, and one is the vanilla 159, as in it's not been used. This is the one actually from my setup. The the thing with MAME is that you have to use the games or the ROMs for the version of the emulator and vice versa. So if you've downloaded a pack of ROMs or if you've dumped an arcade <laughs> and it's of a ROM version, uh, say for example 153 as I have, all my ROMs are of the variant of 153. 
so I will have to use the main emulator for want of a better word um, also labelled 153 the emulator works in conjunction with the ROMs or the CHDs, we'll talk about this in a second however you cannot use for example main UNFX even though that's the most up-to-date version you cannot use that, I wouldn't be able to use that on my ROMs so some people update them all the time I, I'm not a big updater on MAME I've got all the games that I want running and there is a slight variance with each uh, release but to be honest until something major is released within MAME or something major gets working that isn't previously I'm happy with my 153 setup but if you are you know downloading currently and you haven't got any ROMs whatsoever then there's no issue you may as well go for the most current setup which is uh, 159 at this moment in time so I hope that clears that one up for you you can update I believe uh, your ROM versions using uh, cl clear, clear up main pro or something I've I've never done that so I couldn't comment I don't know how easy, uh, how easy it is or how hard it is I just know it's possible. I don't do it. I, I'm probably one of the worst people for it. I just download a whole new set. If I need it, I just download it. Whatever. So, yep, yeah, that's possible. It's doable. So that's the emulators cleared up. Right, back onto back in the game. Let's set up Mame on our system. Right. So this is our root of the hyperspin that we installed earlier. So in my instance it's on the computer, I'm not using my initial, my proper Hyperspin setup, I've set up a demo setup of Hyperspin in my D drive. So I go into D drive, here is my Hyperspin folder where I've got everything set up. So I'm going to click into that and here we are, Hyperspin, Hyperlaunch, I've set up a shortcut for Hyperlaunch HQ within there so it's easier for me to navigate. Um, we've loaded up Hyperlaunch HQ, we made utilities folder for the startup script to get our Xbox 360 working and we've also as standard now it comes issued with a emulators folder as of yet in this setup um, we haven't installed our well any emulators whatsoever so let's go ahead and do that um, navigate yourself to the download section that we just did go to the emulators uh, of course uh, in this instance, because I've got the 153 games, I'm going to be installing the 153 setup. So I'm going to bring that over. There we go. That's now um, the emulator put into our emulators folder. See, emulator folder in our root. Emulators there. Obviously, we don't need to keep my setup and blah de blah on there. You can keep your. Um, version number on there, it's probably a good idea to do so but for this instance I'm not, I'm just going to call it MAME uh, MAME UNFX so I know which emulator it is and within there as you can see we've got the various folders and files which actually make up the emulator or whatever you call the MAME setup okay that is that so far we've got our emulator in the correct place so let's minimize that now what we need to do is tell actual Hyperlaunch HQ where our main setup is. So navigate ourselves to the main in the emulators tab. So so far we're on the global system because we're setting up our global emulator. There are specific system emulators that you can set up. For example, main hasn't got anything done to it yet. We've got no ROM paths, no emulator, no nothing set up. But what we want to do is set up the global emulator for main. So we're going to go to global first. Then we're going to navigate to the emulators section or the emulators tab. And we're going to scroll down here where it says emulator. We're going to scroll down to where it says main. There you go. And then once we're in there, we're going to double click and this will open this fresh new window. Fresh new window for fresh new information. Um, as you can see because we did the uh, example one basically we've got all the information previously uh, well set it to be honest we've got the module that it's going to be using and the ROM extensions um, no need to change that unless you've got any issues but I don't think we will so we just need to tell this um, 
where the path is to our exe for main. So, as we talked about, we know that this is our hyperspin folder in D drive hyperspin. So we take ourselves to our emulators, and in there is the only emulator that we've put in there so far, which is main UI and effects, whatever you call it. Go into it, and there's the exe. In this version of MAME we have got um, the 153 version which is the one that we're using for our ROMs. I'm using a 64 bit, no NAG. NAG is the screen that, well I'll tell you about all this in a second. However that's all the bits that's put onto the... Okay, so double click on that and there we go. As you can see we've got MAME, we've got our path going straight to it in the EXE we've got our ROM extension set up and we've got our module. Ignore all these, you don't need these for this version. So close out of it and that will save. Now as you can see next to MAME we have no exclamation mark. That means that that is currently working. Okay, so there we go. That's MAME set up in our global emulators. Now what we can do is actually set up MAME within Hyperlodge. So navigate to our MAME in the left hand pane. Um, you don't need to f mess around with any of these at the moment, not to my knowledge so far. So first of all we need to set up our ROM paths. Hopefully by this point, if you haven't already, you need to have uh, ROMs actually downloaded. So as we talked about, I've got version 153 of my ROMs. Um, so you have to navigate to the actual folder where the ROMs exist. I believe I've got mine in my hyperspin bit ROMs and here's a list of my ROMs uh, MAME 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 where are you MAME there we go MAME 153 ROMs there you go so my ROMs match my emulator I'm going to tell it that it's that folder because there's that many games in there it takes a while for it to figure out there's no more folders within that folder <laughs> there's there's so many, there's thousands and thousands of games in there. Okay, so now we've got that set up. Click OK, and there we go. We've now set our ROM path for our main emulator. Now we need to tell Hyperlaunch HQ what actually emulator we want to use. Well, it's blatantly obvious because we just set it up, but Hyperlaunch HQ doesn't know that. So, cleverly enough, it knows already what emulators you can use with main. So in this setup, we could at the moment, at this moment in time, we can use either RetroArch or MAME. RetroArch is another emulator which also uses MAME within it. The thing is, uh, RetroArch is a very good emulator. However, for arcade games, MAME is the best choice. It's more stable. You get a f better features in my eyes and to be honest I enjoy using main so I'm going to choose that boom we're in that's it as simple as it is you just click on the little magnifying glass choose which emulator you want and then double click it and there we go it's done okay so now we've got our main set up in Hyperlaunch HQ now we want to get it set up yeah, well the actual emulator itself set up there's not much to do to be honest, so let's have a quick look. We'll go down to our folder that we had open earlier, which as you can see again, just to make confirm. Uh, you've got your media, where mine's, well, mine's installed in my D drive, which is my media drive, inside the hyperspin folder, inside there is my actual setup. Then we've got the emulators folder and the actual main emulator itself within there. So open that up and here we go. This is our um, main, and as we talked about, I'll give a quick explanation as to uh, what this means. Basically, I've got main UIFX. It's a variation of the main. It's got a few added additions and a few bits that are well, a few annoyances that are taken away. It's for 153, which is the version of my ROMs, and it's for a 64-bit version of. Um, well, your operating system. So if you've got, I think it's more than a, a dual core or more, then you can run a 64-based system. Um, I'm not going to go into all that stuff because that's just 
<laughs> I'm a bit of a geek, but I'm not that geeky. Basically, if you should know if you've got a 64-bit system or a 32 or 80, whatever it is, 86-bit system. I don't know. Anyway, mine's a 64-bit. Uh, it's no nag, so when MAME opens, sometimes it gives a little warning at the beginning saying this game may not run properly as intended, blah de blah bit of a warning, and you have to wiggle your sticks to get out of it. That's been taken away. Um, it keeps a high score of basically all my games so if I get a score then the next time I play it the high score will still be there. Uh, Neo Geo Extra to be honest I couldn't comment on what that is it probably does some bits and bobs for Neo Geo um, I know that there's uh, variations of how you can play the Neo Geo games whether they be with credits or without uh, for example the home version was almost identical if not identical to the arcade variants it was just a case of adding coins or not adding coins and a few added extras so maybe that's something to do with that I don't know maybe one of you can comment on that and a direct input that's basically so I can play my Xbox 360 without any issues and a few other features as well but that's basically a quick rundown of the variant that we're running so all we need to do now is open it up um, as default uh, everything should basically be set up and I think most 99% of the stuff that you can set up in this uh, maybe IUFX, whatever you call it um, can be done for the actual module uh, we'll talk about the module in a second when we have to brush up on it but uh, basically it means that I can fiddle with the settings in Hyperlaunch HQ rather than in here however I'm not sure if this needs to be done but I like to do it anyway I just need to make sure that main points towards my ROMs. This is one of the few emulators that you need to do this. Or you may not need to do this. Maybe someone can clear that up again in the comment section. I don't know. But I do this anyway and it works. So if it works, why not, eh? So get yourself over to the options section. This should be a, a, a box called directories. Open that up. And as you can see, in this instance, it goes straight to my ROMs. Uh, Basically, you can tell um, MAME where various things are. As default, it should be set up pretty standard and generic. But obviously, because everyone's computer is different, ROMs will be in a different place. I'm not sure. I think this is the correct place because it's taken from my old system. Um, it's kept the settings from there. So, what we'll do is we'll change that. So, we'll go browse. Um, I'll point it towards my ROMs, so as you can see there's where my hyperspin was, that's where my ROMs are, so I'm going to click into that one, if it does want to play, no. It takes a while, again, it's like hyper launch, there's that many um, games in there that it takes ages for it to load up. Ah, right, yeah. So we've got the... <laughs> that's the drive where they're located on. It's in that folder within the drive. And then we scroll down to the actual main games, or ROMs, and there it is. Main 153, that corresponds with 153 of the emulator. And it's all in there. You don't have to point to anything within there. These are just the names of the games that are ROMs that are in main. You don't have to point towards them. You have to point to the folder that contains them. So, click OK there, and there we go, it keeps that. I don't think there was any change, but for you, obviously, it won't be in your P drive, because, <laughs> you know, what's the odds of you having the exact same location of your games? So, point that towards wherever your games are located, and I think that should be about it. We'll, uh, we'll bite the bullet and see if it works, but we'll go for that. So, we press OK. Now, what it's going to do is it's going to actually audit the system. So it knows, MAME knows about all the games that have ever been invented for this version of MAME and there they are, a big massive list it gets very complicated, I couldn't tell you half the stuff that this does um, I just know what I need to know and it works for me but I'm going to pass the knowledge on here's the various games that you can get and within the games themselves they have different variants so say for example here's Donkey Kong, a Japanese version and it's a clone of the US version so I think that's probably it so as you can see MAME actually has you know it can be up to 10 
different games for the same game, different variations, whether they be new revisions to fix bugs, or for different countries, or just a different style of the actual game in the first place. Um, I don't like to run it like that. Some games I do, um, but I like to play the actual, you know, the, the released version. So uh, we'll go, we'll go we'll, we'll go along these lines of configuring that once we actually get it all set up, because you can do that within the database and the actual setup of Hyperspin. But like I said, it's ordered in the system as you can see down the bottom. It's looking for all the ROMs that are in that folder that I pointed it to, and it's marrying them up with the games that it holds in its database, and it's scanning for all the games to make sure that they are there. Should I say? Um, wait for it to say finish. It mines the full set. I've got both the ROM set and the CHD. For those that don't know, we'll have a quick look at my um, ROM folder. Our ROM drive. No, hyperspin. Okay, here's my ROM drive. Or one of my ROM drives. It holds the games that I have dumped. <laughs> from all the systems that I have in my house <laughs> using various dumping uh, capabilities <laughs> um, however we'll navigate to MAME so there we go my MAME version 153 and within there is uh, 29,000 different files um, that's basically all the games that's in there the ones that are in uh, folders are what they call CHDs uh, CHDs is actually just a ROM of the game. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, the game. It's just a a game. These are ROMs, and the ones at the top are CHDs. The both games. It's just that back in the day, you had the old school games which were on circuit boards. Circuit boards. Um, they held the games on them, and they were different processors. Blah blah blah. But it was more of a I wouldn't say mechanical, but a an old school version. Uh, they come on chips and boards. Um, then obviously uh, computers progressed and they couldn't fit all the information on boards. So what they did was as modern day computers they made hard drives. Hard drives installed into the machines and they hold all the information of the games. And it was just a case of the boards then translating the actual information from the hard drives. And all of these CHDs are, are a, a, one of the better word uh, images of the hard drives so if you want the complete set then you will need to download the CHDs and the ROMs um, much of the CHDs still do not work to this day it's nobody's fault it's just a case of um, uh, keeping up with the times and the actual makers of MAME making uh, developing so they do work or if, if they can. Sometimes there's bad dumps, no one can get hold of certain games and you know I'm probably waffling on here but to get I'd say 90 odd percent of the games for MAME just download the ROMs that'll get you a good start you'll be able to play almost any game going there'll only be a few games that you probably will want to play missing but if you want to tick all the boxes and like I am get everything you can then also download the CHDs but be aware these are hard drive intensive they will start to pad out your hard drive I believe it's like three four hundred gigabytes which isn't much but you know it's a lot to download and it, when you start to add up all the other systems you will start to fill space quite considerably so you know it's up to you at the end of the day anyway enough of that so let's have a look is this still working nope we've done so now we should be able to I don't think there's any more settings that I need to do in here we can close out of here um, I don't think we need this anymore so we can go to our uh, media and go back to our drives so we're ready for the next stages um, whilst we're here a quick fix I've noticed there was a issue um, with unless you are currently up to date with the hyper launch programs and you've just done a git um, download covered in one of my other videos you will or may need to make a little alteration right for this one go into module extensions and you will see a folder named DXWND 
Okay, navigate to that and go inside. And there you will see a WXWND file. And it's a any type file. There's also a DLL file, an application extension file. Excuse me. Um, what we need is this WX WND example file. I don't like to delete everything as you said as I've said before, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make a copy of this and I'm gonna paste it in the same folder. Okay, so now I've got the original and I've got a copy version. Basically what I'm doing is I'm taking away the example as we did with our emulator settings or emulator list. Um, there's the example and Hyperlaunch can't find it as an example so I need to take away the example so Hyperlaunch knows where that file is. So I've just done that, press enter and there we go. It's the exact same file as that except this time it's not got the example but I like to keep the original file just in case. I've done enough <laughs> deletes on Hyperspin to know that sometimes you may need that again. So there we go, it's backed up and that's done. Simple thing and now you can forget about it. Okay, now that is up and running. We should, I hope, be good to go. So let's minimize out of there. Okay, um, as we talked about earlier, databases, I believe at the moment when I click on to the games tab, there we go, there's our database full of games. This is the original database, the one that come with Hyperlaunch. It won't be specific to this ROM set. So let's have a quick scan. Takes a while because of the amount of games that we've got. If it gets 100%, okay, there we go. It scanned them all. And let's have a look what it audited. Okay, with this scan, I've got 7,902 ROMs of 8,000 and odd ROMs. Okay, so let's just see if it works. What we'll do is we'll click on one of these at the Basically, that's the name of the file that's in our hard drive, and that's the description or the actual name in real life of what that game is. So as you can see, you've got different variations of 1942. I actually like 1942. It was a good game back in the day. So I'll tell you what, let's give it a go. See if it works. Let's pray to the gods of games. So to get it to work, we press that one to actual, actually, oh, what's it called? audit. <laughs> We've audited the database that we hold with the games that's in our hard drive. Now this little rocket here says launch selected like game through hyperlaunch. So what we're going to do is we don't need our hyperspin at the moment. We're just going to test that the actual game works with hyperlaunch. So click on this. Please don't show an error. Boom. Get in. And there you go. Now we've got hyper, uh, 1942 or MAME as we know now working in Hyperlaunch. So, what we can do whilst we're here, really quickly, I'll show you a quick tip. Let me just reach for my uh, control pad. Turn this on, it may make a big sound. There we go, that's my control pad now sinking in. Okay, as we talked about, we're using the Hyperspin emulator, uh, sorry, Hyperspin front end. We use Gucci script to navigate through the menu. If you're using my version of Hyperspin, you probably have this already set up. Um, let's have a look. No, it's not brought over the um, configuration that I use. So what we need to do now is actually configure the controls. Because Gucci's script only works in Hyperspin, it doesn't work with the emulators. So you now need to configure every emulator to work with controls. It's a pretty easy way to do it in all the systems that I use. And I'll show you how to do that now. Just press the tab key on your uh, emulator. and that should bring up this little um, box. All you need to do, you can navigate with the uh, either your joypad because it does recognize, the, the menu does recognize it in hyper, uh, sorry, in main and also you can use your keys. So what we need to do is input well, you can do it in general or you can do it this game. So if you've got a very specific game which is quite unique, uh, you can input the actual controls just for this game. But for this scenario, we're going to do it in general. So it means that every time I open MAME, 
it will use this variation of the controls unless I load a game and it doesn't work so I would then input just for that game but in this instance we're going to use input in general okay so we've got user interface and we've got player controls uh, I'm just going to show you a player one and user interface and other controls I can't remember which ones I need to set up All right we don't need anything from that one so <laughs> wherever you do don't press escape because it will escape out of the actual emulator so what you need to do is navigate up and down to return to previous menu press enter and uh, go to player one controls okay none of the controls are set up so I'm going to quickly set these up, all you need to do is press enter and then the controller of what you want to do, so I'm going to go up and there you go it's done the uh, Oh, he's doing it for my x <laughs> right? Uh, but basically, I'll tell you what, let's escape out of here. I'll quickly close down my x which I've set up for another system. There we go, my x is now blank. <laughs> let's... Uh, Try this again. Let's see if we can close it actually out altogether. There we go. Okay, so let's get back into the game. I think I've installed a different game this time. Oh, we're playing a different game. Okay, let's try that again. So we want to do it for input in general. Uh, play one controls. We're going to use the up and down. So we wanted to go up. There we go. This time it's done it by the joystick, not by the keys. So ignore everything that I did previously. It's still the same process, but this time we do it for the joystick. So I've just pressed the analog stick up, and it's it's recognised that, and it's put them down as well up. <laughs> and obviously do the down, left, self-explanatory, right. Um, I ignore all these because it seems to figure out what it, what's going on anyway and then just do your buttons, so button 1 delete in any order button 2 I'm just clicking random buttons on my joypad in some kind of natural sequence 5 6 7 8 now Obviously, it carries on going to 16. There's not many games on main or in the world that use 16 buttons, unless it's quite a, I don't know, strategic game or something. I don't know. But as long as you fill up, you know, all the buttons that's on your joypad for now, then you're good to go. Then obviously you will need the player one start button. So I'm going to obviously press start on my joypad. There you go. And I'm also going to do select. So I'll do select on my joypad. There you go. Now that's all done. As you can see, there's quite a lot of um, controls set up, but you don't need to do all these controls. Most of them are set up pretty easy. So navigate all the way down, return to previous menu. Now all those controls that we did should be set up. As we talked about, we don't need the user interface ones because these seem to be quite, um, I don't know. Well, for unless you need anything specifically doing, there's no need at this time. So I've set up now player one controls. That will be generic across the entire main catalogue. So every game that I open in main, them settings should in theory save to the to the games. Uh, obviously not all games will suit that setup. So if that does come apparent then obviously in that instance you would click the setup controls just for that game option but we're setting it up for all of them at this point so now the main one is other controls and as we can see we've got player one start so we're going to press start on the control pad for player one obviously you can go through your other joypads and set them up as well if you wish but we're just going to set this one up for now our main one for the main is obviously it needs money or in theory it needs money to start the game so we click that one and I like to press down on the right thumbstick to put my coins in so I don't knock it and I'm not constantly adding coins in the middle of games and making stupid noises. Okay, so now we can press start the game 
we can put coins in and we've got controls for the games. Go down to the previous menu and hopefully that should now uh, return to previous menu, yep, and then return to game. Now hopefully when I press the right stick it will think that I've just put money in. Boom, there we go. I'm a millionaire. Throwing money in everywhere. And now if we press that. <laughs> I'm going to exit out of that because it's probably blowing your speakers, it's blowing my headphone. <laughs> but as you can see, now we've got hype, uh, sorry, we've got main running in Hyper Launch HQ and we've configured the controls within MAME and we've tested the game. Just to confirm that the controls are carrying out throughout other games, let's quickly choose a, another random game. Uh, we'll have a bit of uh, Airwolf. I'm back in, we'll play the US version, I don't, I've got no idea what difference this makes. But let's have a go. Okay, and there we go, there's Airwolf set up. Um, again, the controls should be generic throughout all the games, so I'm going to press the right thumbstick down to put the credits in. And there we go, we're going. Now I'm going to press start button, and I should be able to play a little game. If it's too loud, I'm just going to exit out, because I don't want to ruin new speakers. So here we go. Okay, and there we go. I've now set up the. Uh, we've set up MAME, we've told it where the games are, we have um, set it up so it's working in Hyperlaunch HQ, the controls are working, so that's basically the hard part done. Now it's just making all the media and things work well. So, here we go. Right, okay, so now we know what. MAME is, we know that it works in Hyper Launch HQ uh, and that to be honest is the hard bit like we just said. Um, getting the actual games to run and things like that is always the hard part in Hyper Launch but the worst part of it is to get all the art and media together and that's what we're going to go into now. So luckily I have done more or less everything for you, I've put it all into the download section so let's go back over to the actual download that I gave you and there we can see we have got the emulators that we just used we've got the databases uh, I'll tell you what why not let's do these right now at the, this moment I'm using the databases themselves so as you can see I used the generic one which was included with hyperspin or the hyperspin download um, that although does cover most games it includes everything and to be honest I don't want to play everything um, although it sounds like a good thing there's many games that don't work and not emulated correctly and also there's casino games and uh, what they call mojong which is basically the Japanese uh, like dice kind of game uh, I'm not interested so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put in the database which has been edited and is relevant to my setup so as you can see I included them in the actual download section there we go and I've included them for the most relevant version or the most current version which is the 159 version however in this instance I'm using the 153 version I've included the um, the normal original version the no casino mojong whatever you pronounce it or mature uh, or no casino and bojong but <laughs> I'm not saying I'm a perv or anything but I'm in this instance gonna go for the no casino and no mojong because uh, you know I'm not 
<laughs> Everyone's 18 in my house. I've got no kids, so I don't really care. And let's face it, <laughs> it's not exactly porn on MAME, is it? So, we will go for that one. Close out of there. I think we're going to have to open a new tab for this one. No, we're good. So, there's our downloads that are in that section that we just downloaded. And what we need to do now in the relevant area, we need to place our database. So, here's how we do databases. We go to our hyperspin setup. Here we are, the actual root folder within the D drive, within the hyperspin folder. And there we go. As you can see, one of the folders is called databases quite handily. So, let's go in there. And here are all the databases that is installed as default. Basically, all the default uh, installs as included with hyperspin so we need to find the main one there we go main and it looks like there's quite a lot included in there to be honest but we don't need any of that stuff we are concentrating on the actual main games so what we're going to do is find the one that we want to use in this instance this one we're going to rename this to MAME press enter and there we go that's going to be our current database so in our database folder although we may have all of these different named um, databases the one that is going to be the default database is the MAME one it's always the same name as the actual system so in this case it's MAME so what we're going to do now is, again, <laughs> I'm a stickler for things. Nothing will be used that isn't named correctly in Hyperspin. So all you need to do if you want to keep something is either put it in a folder within where it belongs or rename it. So what I like to do is just put backup next to everything. So if I do mess anything up, I could always got the files there ready to roll. However, because it's got backup and it's not main cor uh, named, should I say, correctly, then in this instance it's not going to use it. So then just drag and drop and there we go. Now when I load um, now when I load, or should I say uh, audit inside Hyperlaunch HQ. It won't be exact, there will be games missing. However, as you can see, it's <laughs> more or less very close. There's a few games that is missing, it's just the way the downloads work from wherever you get them from. Again, I'm not going to supply you with any downloads for ROMs or anything like that, or games. Uh, Google is your best friend. There are specific sites, and if you go into the Hyperspin forums, um, I'm sure there's somebody who can help you with a place to buy. Um, <laughs> to buy the actual arcade cabinets, so dump all your ROMs. But, internet is your friend on this one. Um, there are free uh, things everywhere, you just have to look for them. Um, just make sure you do get free things from places. Okay, enough of that. Anyway, just don't bother me with it. So, in this instance, as you can see, our database changed. We went from 8,000 and odd, and we've weaned it down to those, either because they those weren't working, or they were Mojong or Casino. So there you go. They've now been culled from my database. So when I load Hyperspin, you won't see them. There we go. So we'll minimize that. That's MAME now set up in the database. Now, as we talked about, we can start focusing on our front end, which is Hyperspin. So, Hyperspin works in a quite easy way. So, let's load Hyperspin up and have a look and see what it's like in its current state. It will have all the default things. It probably won't have many wheels, probably no videos, and all that jazz. So, we're now going to... Um, just have a look, see what it's like, to be honest. Right. So, let's see, it looks a little bit normal. It is a bit loud, my apologies. I did turn it down, but... Oh, yeah. 
Okay, that's the actual main, that's the system theme, um, not very appetizing, but nowadays things have moved on since then. So now we're going to click into it, and there we go, as you can see it's very mixed up, um, all the games are there but there's no art as of yet. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to provide you with as much art as you may need. So. Let's do this. We'll escape out. And let's have a look at um, the main folder. Artwork. Okay, I'm going to set up the widescreen version because I'm using a widescreen one in this. I have included some of the art and stuff that's included with the uh, normal variant however mine is more complete in the widescreen variant if you have got a normal ratio I suggest you don't use it because it will look all squished up I suppose and vice versa the other way it will look all spread out if you use a widescreen one on a normal ratio it's one of the limitations on hyperspin so try and get your art to match that and in this instance I'm going to use the widescreen so here we go right all the art and media will be found in the media folder within your hyperspin install so take yourself to the root folder where the hyperspin is and you should have a folder called media click in and there we go that's all the systems already set up so far on your database these come as standard in there won't be much media at all because it was the actual default install that came with hyperspin so what we're going to do is we're going to translate all the stuff that we downloaded and put it in the relevant areas ready for you, well ready for your front end so on your main we're going to first of all start off with the theme this is the system uh, sorry the actual default theme within the system theme so you've got your main menu with your dreamcast um, main game boy and all that kind of stuff then you click on it and then it's the next theme that pops up then so we're going to go into here and as you can see I've included both the main menu theme and the default theme so this is the one that will show all your games this is the one that will show well basically all the um, well the main menu theme um, slightly different just in the way the uh, sp spread out within the theme you'll notice it in a second anyway so let's install so here we go as you can see there's the one that's already inputted on the system we're going to save that default we're going to call that original backup I don't like to delete things so we'll keep that in there because it's not named correctly it won't use it so then we're going to take over our default system and smash it in there okay we'll worry about our main menu one because that goes to a different place in a second Okay, now we're just going to make our way through our images, which are all in here. Okay, right, uh, MAME is a pretty easy one because it doesn't have any box art or car art, it basically only has themes and wheels. So, first of all, we're going to do our wheel. Here we go, I've included 7,108 wheels. Um, I think it's quite current, I'm not sure, it's just the ones that I've got from the downloads. But I've, there's probably a couple of extra added in here and there, but it's most of the main ones. I've resized these already, so these will look in perspective when using a widescreen monitor within Hyperspin. So, all we need to do now is select all. So, I'm going to click on one, control A, that will select everything. Right click on there, click copy, and then go to our wheel section as you can see there's one already in there the one that came as default we're going to right click and click paste now that will move all the wheels that I gave you into the actual main folder and as you can see it's starting to kick off now and move all the wheels over well copy them over should I say um, 
replace the one that was already in there, yeah, just in case it's been updated. And there we go. Now in uh, Hyperspin, you have all your wheels set up in there. Okay, now we're going to go to the special. So I'll click out of here. We have the special. And as you can see, we've got all these set up. What I've done is I've got my own special ones because I use 360 pads so the arcade version of special which I'll explain in a second isn't very relevant to me so I've made my own or I've taken from somebody else's uh, and bastardized them a little is one of the better word and as you can see I have also converted all of these so they are more of a widescreen format so basically what I'm going to do is I'm, in this instance I'm going to delete everything from here because I don't really want it it's all crap to me so delete and then I'm going to keep all this same process again right click copy and then paste there we go um, these will become more relevant in a minute once we've moved all that out over we'll start setting it all up other, ok we've got a pointer and at the moment we've got the default pointer, we don't like that so we're going to right click that copy and we're going to paste it yeah so once we replace it what else have we got? we got letters Include some letters for you. All these have, again have been resized for the widescreen format, so we don't need to save these letters because they're on every system that's on there. So delete those because I hate them. And this time we're going to use the Pac-Man look-alike uh, letters. So same process exactly again. Copy, and paste, and what else have we got? Genre or genre or whatever it is you pronounce it, wherever you come from. Um, all these have been done as well. So I'm not sure if it comes as standard, but we're going to do them anyway. Uh, it does come as standard, but I'm going to delete those. And I'm going to bring those over. Because those are the widescreen modified ones that I made. And we've already talked about the themes. The only one left to do now is the actual system themes. These are held in a different place. So when we go to our... Uh, um, so far we've worked in the main media section. So we've gone into our media and we've sorted out the section in the main bit. We put all our images and stuff like that in there that I've supplied for you. And now we need to set up the theme that goes with our main menu, as in the one where we choose which system we want to play. So the theme for that one is held in a different place. So what we're doing is we're clicking on the main menu, as in we want to go into the main menu and change one of the themes in there. And obviously we're changing a theme, so we're going to go in there. And these are the ones that's already set up in there so far, but we want to change the one that's called main. Now, replace. Now, as you'll see in a second when I load this up, the actual main theme is, um, it's not called main my theme, it's called uh, Arcade Classics I believe. It's because, like I said before, nobody knows what MAME is where I am, so everyone knows it as uh, Arcade Classics, it makes more sense to me. So, a point to note is that you don't rename your actual artwork, because Hyperspin needs the exact, I mean case sensitive exact, um, names on everything from your wheels, your themes, your videos, everything that's involved with Hyperspin needs to be exact for it all to marry up and for it to work correctly. So, as I said, everything that's included is done as per I just said. So, now, hopefully, when I click on Hyperspin again, we should now have wheels in there and we should have some kind of theme going on. Uh, videos will still be missing, we'll talk about that in a second. Right, so, click on the hyperspin, take a second, it may be loud, I do apologise. Boom, there 
there you go. As you can see, oh, I've got it in the windowed mode at the moment. That's going to squish everything up. So I'll tell you what, let's come out of there. Because when you're in windowed mode, it shows you it in the um, normal ratio, 4 by 3 So we'll open Hyper HQ, just so you can see it in all its full glory. Um, navigate over to do, 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 screen in uh, full screen enabled. Yes, it doesn't matter about this because that's only a windowed resolution. And uh, there's no need to save anything; it does it automatically. So now we're gonna click on out. Let's have another go. Now it should run full screen, and the ratio should look correct. <coughs> Boom! There we go. Hyperspin's now loaded up. Took a bit of a second there for it to uh, get its bearings, but as you can see, it's now working. Here we go. So it's working as per normal. Click into there. And there you go. Now we've got our... Sorry, I don't want to talk while that's going on because you won't be able to hear me. Um, now we've got our theme set up and we've got our wheel set up. Now what we need to do is more or less titivate. So, um, we need to make it look good. So we've got all our artwork in there already. What we need to do now is open up Hyper HQ. This now is the final stages, really, for making it look good. Let's have a look. Okay, so we've got our wheel. Uh, sorry, we'll go to our wheel settings. We'll choose our wheel. We want main because that's the one we've just been setting up. Right now, um, some of you need to do this, some you don't. However, I'm going to show you how I do it, and then we can work it from there. Okay, so emulate the first one that sets up. Once you chose wheel main, we'll now be greeted with this tab of emulators. Only ones you need to worry about is ROM path. Self-explanatory. Take yourself to wherever your ROMs are. In my case, it's Hyperspin uh, ROMs. Uh, find main point it to that again the folder's massive so it takes a few seconds for it to read all the files within there come on no time okay it's done so now we've highlighted that one, click OK, just confirm it's in the P drive, the ROMs, and it's pointed towards the folder where all my ROMs are located. And we don't need to set any parameters. The only thing we need to do now is set the extensions. Now, typing in this is very case sensitive and everything has to be exact. I think I've got maybe two different variations of files within MAME on my download. It should be the same as yours to be honest. But we're going to set all the possibilities where it could be. So just to be on the safe side, doesn't matter if you put any extras in, but we're going to include them anyway. So they're all compressed files I believe in um, MAME and CHD. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the different various file types. So in this instance we're going to put 7-zip, if we can type correctly, 7-zip, no space, comma. And then we're going to put zip, no space, comma, ra, no space, comma, and I think chd might be involved as well in there somewhere. But it doesn't matter if it's wrong as long as the layout is correct. Um, it's always handy to have more than what's in there. However, those are the ones which, off the top of my head, are involved in the main. We may have to go back there in a second just to do it, but I think that should be correct. Remember, there's no spaces, and you divide each file extension by the uh, by the comma with no spaces. If you want to check as well, what you need to do is go to your actual uh, 
place where your ROMs are. Main. And actually have a look at your file formats. So mine are all zip files. So zip corresponds to all these that are there. Inside the folders, yep, chds. So now I've got zip and chd. So that's probably the only file extensions that are used. But the others being there doesn't make any difference. It picks up on the odd stray sometimes. Okay, so we can click out of there. That's this bit set up. Now we'll go onto the wheel. Click on the wheel tab at the top. Um, because of the themes that load up, I don't like to see my wheel once the theme has loaded. So when I'm scrolling up, the wheels will be full in full view. Then once it's settled and I'm looking at a game in the video, what I want it to do is dim itself all the way down so you cannot see the wheels anymore until you start to press up and down and searching through the wheels again. It's because in MAME I like to see my themes and sometimes the wheels get in the way of the themes. You'll see this again in a minute but that's the way I like it. Also personal preference but I like the style of mine to be vertical rather than the actual so it sweeps round in a circle or straight up and down I like mine straight up and down I like to mine uniformly throughout all the systems um, s the size of the actual wheels yeah keep it 40 uh, uh, sorry keep it 400 or 240 change them if you want that's the way I like it I want my pointer the bit on the side that we talked about earlier to be um, animated it pops up and down basically when it's moving and everything else on there should be kept exactly the same high position keep everything else at default and we should be good don't worry about wheel text we'll come across that in a second so now that's that one done okay next one go on to navigation of themes right this is important very important okay I want it to load the last game that it ran otherwise it starts from the beginning of the wheel every time you do it I like it to keep track it's, it, it, you know, it keeps it different, there's that many games on there to start at the beginning every time you never see the games at the end of your list and vice versa so I like to start from where I was last time also I want it to use only ROMs in my database uh, so what it does is it, it marries the games in your database with the games on your hard drive and the ones I'm telling it that I only want to see the ROMs that are in the database and are on my hard drive. Although there may be more games in a database that don't belong there, if I try to run it, obviously it's not going to find the game. So I want it to run the ones with ROMs only. So only the ones with games. I also don't want to see any crap on there, like any ones that haven't got wheels because I like mine to look pretty cool. So I'm going to click wheels only. And probably the only one that you'll do on this, because there's that many games, and as we talked about there's quite variations of the games I want it to play parents only so it's only playing the master version of that game the most popular one uh, or the most current one so there we go on this one I'm picking wheels parents and ROMs only um, also uh, personal preference on this one I don't want it to see any uh, variations of it I just want to see the name of the game by clicking this normally cuts out the crap on the end of the title which tells me if it's version 5.2 alpha or something click on that and it just usually gives the name of the title when you're scrolling through and on this one clones use parent themes so when we download our themes in a second you will see that all the games that are relevant to that game will use the same theme as the one that it's intended for it makes more sense when you're actually loading through okay so that's that videos leave that as default it should work them as they are even though it's probably the wrong location just ignore that for now they're probably working and me I hate these sounds so take them off if you wish or leave them on if you wish but I hate them I like to just have the wheel click otherwise it gets very annoying very fast and then because I added the special art I like to use just one of the files on Special Art is called Special Art B1, which is basically the controller layout that I use. So if you want to enable it, copy those files over and to make it look right on the theme, put 500 in that one. 384 
in that one. We'll, we'll go on why we're doing this in a second. Uh, sorry, in later videos. But for now, just put these in if you want to use my controller layout. Um, in that one, I'm going to choose um, one, one, and in that one, I want to choose three. Okay. So now that is all running well. Now, if I click out of here, a little pipe spin again, we should see those little changes. Oh. Here we go. So there's our main theme in widescreen. Now, as you can see at the bottom, I've got my control uh, button images on there, which describe what the various ones do, and that relates to actually Gulch's script. So if you press one of those on the control pad, it will actually do that on the game. It makes it current, rather than having the uh, other ones. And as you can see on the right hand side, the wheels have now disappeared. So as we go up and down, they disappear once you get to a game, and only reappear when you're scrolling. That's the way I like it, and as you can see, it's also vertical instead of curved like it was earlier. And there we go. That is that. Okay, and now on to the next phase. <laughs> 